Messiah Church of Christ in Tallahassee, Florida. She graduated from Florida A&M University in Tallahassee, Florida with a degree in business administration. She is currently a homemaker and mother of three children, Alexis, 14, Cleveland the third, 12, and Julian, 10. She lives to give back to her community. She loves to give back to her community and was awarded Tallahassee Demo Democrat Volunteer of the Year in 2010 for Astoria Elementary School in Tallahassee, Florida. She has recently authored a girl's book entitled Discovering the Treasure Within. This book is a girl's guide to virtuous living in an anything goes world. Linda's goal is to make it to heaven and to help others along the way. I had the pleasure of meeting Linda at MIC just at the beginning of this year, and, uh, and I know she's a wonderful person. We even took pictures together, our first meeting, so professional pictures, so it just worked out. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, uh, Sister Glenda Allen. All right, hello sisters, hello. That was wonderful, thank you, thank you so much. All right, as it was stated earlier, my name is Glenda Allen. I bring you greetings from the Eastside Church of Christ in Tallahassee, Florida, where my husband, Cleveland Allen Jr., is the minister. It's so good to see you guys. It's so good to see your smiling faces. I was sitting there in my chair, and I was just leg shaking. I mean, just ready to get going. And uh, first of all, I just want to thank the committee here for you know, choosing me, I'm honored, I'm humbled to have been chosen to come and speak to you guys on today. And, you know, just thank you so much. And also to Ayana, who came before me. She just did a wonderful job. Hey. Hey. She just did great. And today, we live in a world where obtaining out of beauty is the ultimate goal. Yeah. Women are on a quest to find the perfect face, to have the perfect body, the perfect shape. The hair industry is a $500 billion industry. We buy everything from hair products, hair accessories, even somebody else's hair. We spend $33.3 billion on makeup, and beauty products each year. We spend an average of $621 billion on clothes and shoes each year. More than $3 billion on purses. $36 billion on perfume, bath salts, lotion, bath washes and creams. $14.6 billion is spent each year on plastic surgery, Botox, lip injections, breast implants, butt implants. <laughs> and if you be honest with yourself, you know, sometimes you kind of think, with all of this going on, you, know, you have a critical eye of yourself and think maybe I can change this, I can change that. It's the, the mentality of the world. Yeah. This yeah. world yeah. is obsessed with outer beauty. Yeah. As Christian women, we not, might not get caught up in merely outer appearance, but we do want to look good. Yeah. Yeah. We want to express our individual styles through hairstyle, makeup, dress. We want to look good, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to look good. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. But on this morning, I'm glad that God does not look at this outer shell. Amen. He looks at what's on the inside. Yes. Yes. Proverbs 31, 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Yeah. But a woman that feareth the Lord, yes. she yes. shall be praised. Yes. If we give so much attention and time to this outer beauty, it's just a vapor. It's going to vanish away. Yes. This, outer, this outer person. But on this morning, I'm going to challenge us to give more attention to the inner man. Yeah. We are not like the world. Mm -hmm. We are a people of purpose. Yes. Our purpose is to please God and to do his will. Yes. Our purpose is to decrease so that Christ 
will increase. We need to be more like him and less of me. And that's the topic that I was assigned. Selfie anyone, more of him and less of me. We ever hear the song, I give myself away. I give myself away, away, I give myself away, so you can use me, I give myself away, away. today. We're going to try to embody that today. And I'm going to kind of give us some steps of what we can do practically to help us be more like Christ and less like ourselves. Amen. The scripture text I was given was John 3 verse 30. And if you have a Bible, you can turn there. It's very simple. I'm going to read it. And even if you don't have a Bible, you can just repeat it back. John 3.30, it says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Let's say that together. He must increase, but I must decrease. So today, we're going to have a challenge. I'm going to challenge everyone to go from taking a selfie to being a selfless me. Taking a selfie to being a selfless me. Now, we all love to take pictures. We get dolled up. Brother Simmons has been around all week snapping photos. You know, we kind of, when he comes our way, you know, you know. And, um, we even, when we're doing selfies now, you know, we even hold the camera. We know we try to hold it up high so, you know, we kind of get that angle, you know. We, we try to stand in the light, get the, light, the right light, the right angle, you know, smile, you know, turn our face down. I know I like to turn my face to different angles because I have, this is my best side over here. So, you know, try to turn and, you know, make sure I have my best side showing. And nowadays, you know, we don't even need somebody else to take the picture. We have what you call a selfie. And a selfie is a picture taken of oneself, by oneself, using a digital camera, and it's especially for posting on social networks. So we don't just want to take the picture. We want to take it, and then we want to post it up so everybody can see how cute we look. All right. Does anybody want to come up and volunteer right quick to show us how to take a selfie? I will. Look, look, look. Well, I tell you to come up on the stage, not those. I actually really don't like selfies, but I can. I'm in the social network, so I can. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll do an ussy. We'll do an ussy. It's just called an ussy. I'm showing my best side. <laughs> Yay! Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks great. All right, so. And we, and we took it, and we took that. Now, today. I'm going to show you guys how we can go from taking that selfie to being a selfless me. And it's going to be kind of challenging. You know, I might say some things that people might not like, 
That's all right. That's all right. Take, look, take what you can and put the rest to the side. So the first thing we need to do to go from taking a selfie to be a selfless me is we need to stop faking. Amen. We need to stop faking. Amen. We need to be real. As a family, because we are family, we're all family, we need to be real with each other. We need to be so tightly knitted together in love that we can be real with each other because all of us are dealing with stuff. You know, even though we look good, I'm up here looking good, y'all out there looking good, we all go through things. We're all wrestling with something right now. Some issue, a habit, hang up, weight, sin, you know, any type of situation that you're going through. But sometimes, and even I get into this, we want to look so perfect mm -hmm. to everybody around us. We're so used to being camera ready yeah, yeah. that sometimes we forget what's real and what's fake in our own lives. We, yeah. we fool yeah. ourselves into yeah. thinking we're, we, you know, we're perfect. And so what are we dealing with this morning? What are you dealing with this morning? What are some things that you don't want others to know that you might be trying to wear a mask or some makeup to try to cover that up? Things that God already knows. When we try to hide these things from each other. But we have to lay all of these things aside if we're going to run this Christian race. At Hebrews 12 and 1. You can't do that. You can't lay these things aside if we're trying to hide them or if we don't want to tell somebody about these things. You know, I need prayer, I need encouragement. And not saying that you gotta let people know everything that's going on with you, but you need to let people know. You know, you need to let people know. And a lot of the times, you know, we want to be able to relate, especially to the younger people, and they need to know that we still deal with things. It, yeah. it wasn't just when I was young that I dealt with stuff, I'm still dealing with stuff now. A lot of the times, you know, I come to these conferences and I see people, you know, I see some of the same faces everywhere I go. And a lot of times I feel like um, people don't really know me. And I don't really know you. Because when we come here, of course we, you know, we're happy, we're smiling, we're glad to be away. Might have left some problems back at home, some issues. And so today I'm going to open up the door. I'm going to be the first one to let you in on a little bit about me. I went to the doctor in um, December. You know, I used to go for my yearly checkup. I hate going. Yeah, I do the blood work, all, you know, every time I go, I feel like, oh, you know. And so I went to the doctor and she did the blood work and everything and she came back and she said, well, Glenda, you're pre-diabetic. And uh, I said, are you sure? Are you sure? Like, how is that possible? <laughs> and she said, Glenda, you're going to have to make some, some changes in your diet. Are you going to have to start doing some exercise <laughs> to, you know, get this under control, you know, before it turns into a full-blown uh, diabetes? And that was a wake-up call for me. Because, you know, if you look on the outside, you're yeah. thinking every, I'm, everything's good. Yeah. You know, I I'm, I'm look pretty healthy. And, uh, you know, it's just something that I need to share just so I, I can have a courage. So when I grab that plate full of pasta, <laughs> my sisters who care about me need to say, if you see me grab that soda with all that sugar yeah. in it, uh, I'm gonna get some water, so, and I won't be upset. I won't be upset. But that's just a little about me. We just kind of trying to learn each other and knowing what's going on with each other, so that we can encourage and pray and put me on the prayer list too, please. Amen. You know that I can deal with this because when I got that diagnosis, I cried. Boy, I cried. Because I didn't want to change the way I eat. <laughs> I, like, I like pizza. And pastas, that was like.
like 85% of my diet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm sitting there like, well, what am I gonna eat? What am I gonna do? I don't know. So it's been a, it's been a, a, a process. And then when you come here, what they serving? Pasta. <laughs> So, you know, and as a minister's wife especially, as a minister's wife, and I just want to put this in here for you all to really be an encouragement to your minister's wives. Because a lot of the times we feel like we have to put on this face. We have to be the encouragement. You know, we have to have those right words to say. And when well, we need that too. We, we need it. We need it. We need it. I was at a funeral. We buried an 18 month old baby, he was healthy. And he came down with pneumonia and passed, and he passed away. And so we were at the funeral, my husband did the eulogy, we were at the funeral, and um, you know, I, I don't really do well with funerals anyway. And uh, I was standing and I was looking so sad, I know I was, and one of my members came up to me, he was like, what's wrong with you? Oh, <laughs> really? Well, I'm feeling a little sad. You know, and well, you know the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, well, y'all understand. You know, but, you know, you, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm human. I have emotions. I have feelings. And a lot of the times, I feel like sometimes we we put our ministers' wives in a separate category, thinking that you know we don't have those things, but we do. We have those things also, and that's for everybody. Um. So be genuine. Let's be genuine with each other. Let's be genuine. Let's not pretend. Because we're all dealing with something. So stop faking. That's number one. Number two, get naked. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to get naked. Now, you know, when you're at the doctor's office and, you know, you have to do these exams and everything. Uh, you know, she walks out the room, she leaves the thing on the table, okay, yeah. you need to take off the clothes, yeah. and you know, come, come back. I have a woman doctor, so it's a little easier, but it's still, you know, yeah. you put the little sheet around, and it's really not covering, you know, a whole lot, you know, you put the sheet, and you know, so you, you're uncomfortable. Whenever, when you get naked, you're still a little uncomfortable, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, even in front of your doctor, you know. I don't know how many, how many uh, uh, married women we got in here? Single, okay, widow, okay. I'm trying to see how I'm gonna watch, how to watch how I say certain things, but you know when you when you with, with your husband when you were with your husband for the first time, or for those who are single when you are gonna be with your husband for the first time, you know how you kind of felt when you had to kind of take some things off, you know, you, you, you weren't just like, even though that's your husband, that's the love, your love, yeah. you're still a little uncomfortable, you know, yeah. you kind of, you know, you don't yeah, want to yeah, see yeah, yeah. everything, you know, all the, you know, because you might have some birthmarks here, there, you know, you want to kind of keep this perception of, you know, what you see on the outside, that's, that's it. But a lot of the times when we have to get naked, we have, to, we have to stop trying to cover ourselves up. We're covering up scars. We're covering up war wounds, yeah, yeah. hurts, disappointments, failures. That's what makes us beautiful in God's eyes. We don't have to cover that up. Amen. We're natural beauties. When we've gone through that storm or that trial and we've come out on the other side, yeah, bruised up, battered, but not broken, Amen. you don't need to hide that. That's our testimony. We have to strip ourselves of ourselves to be covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's not us that's living, it's Christ that's living in us. It's more of him and less of me. We don't like to be vulnerable to each other. We wanna hide ourselves in fear of being rejected, being hurt, betrayed, being talked about, being misunderstood. You know, I've heard things, you know, she thinks she this, she thinks she that, you know. Um, it's hard to be open sometimes. 
But you know, you have to make a decision that you're gonna let the things you go through make you better, right. not bitter. Amen. And so I'm not gonna let things I go through make me hard and have a tough exterior. I'm still going to show and be vulnerable and be and be open to new and enriching relationships, like with Brittany, who we you know we just met not too long ago. And if I was you know, trying to cover up and hide and I don't really want to reach out and meet new people and you know, because um, she looked like she might be one of them that get close to you and then stab you in the back. You can't tell that from, you know, just meet somebody. You have to give it a chance. So we have to strip ourselves of some things. Pride, jealousy, malice, hatred, grief, worry, Anxiety, fear, idolatry, unforgiveness, adultery. We have to strip ourselves of all of these things. Galatians 5, 15 through 21. We need to be like a snake, shedding these things from our lives one layer at a time. You ever hear some women say, I got thick skin? It's because you're not shedding like you should be. We got to let things we go through make us better, not bitter. With each trial, I'm growing stronger and stronger in Christ. I'm getting naked. Okay. Now the last thing, we have to know that in Christ, I am enough. A lot of the times we feel like if we can't do everything well, that we're failures. Especially as a mother sometimes. I feel I have three kids and I just feel like, am I doing this right? Like, I'm uh, am I messing up their lives? I don't know what. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just kind of feel so inadequate, but I, I have to know as long as I'm following after God's plan yeah, right. yeah. and I'm prayerful and I'm pursuing after what he wants me to do, yeah. that in him I am yeah. enough. Yeah. We always want to appear perfect. But I'm, I'm living, but not me. Christ is living in me. So I don't have to be perfect at everything. That's Galatians 2 and 20. When we put ourselves in Christ's hands, the potter's hands, he molds us and makes us enough. Yes. We can't do it on our own. If we could, we wouldn't have had to come. He wouldn't have had to come to this earth to die for us. Some of us, we think we have it all together. It's kind of like we like a slab of concrete. You ever try to mold some concrete? <laughs> you can't. You can't mold concrete. We can't be like that. We can't think we have it all together. You know, stubborn, can't tell us nothing. Y'all know people like that? Yeah. <clears throat> hey, I've been like that before, too. So, you know, I mean, we, we look. And, you know, when we look in the mirror, the Bible, that's our spiritual mirror. We know that in Christ, I am enough. Romans 5 and 8. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were enough. We were enough then. Enough for him to come and die on the cross. My life is enough. My purpose is enough. You ever see people, you know, searching, and I don't know what my purpose is? You have a purpose. And that should be enough. For you, my goal is enough. I want to make it to heaven. That's enough. God's plan is enough. God's armor is enough. And let me just stop right there. God's armor is enough. I don't have to resort to carnal tactics to defeat my enemy or to get back at somebody. I don't have to use backbiting, shade throwing, Facebook bashing. Undercover hating, yeah. name calling, eye rolling, yeah. backhand whispering. Yeah. God's armor is enough. Yeah. I am worth enough. I have been through enough. I have been lied to enough. I have gossiped enough. I have cheated enough. I have been lied on enough. I have been ostracized enough. I have been stabbed in the back. Enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough is enough. Yeah. I don't have to pretend anymore. I don't always need to be camera ready. 
I don't need to be ready to take a, to pose and take the perfect picture like everything is so perfect in my life. So everybody can look at me and say that I'm beautiful. I don't have to be like the world, obsessed with outer beauty. When I allow Christ to live in me, I can show my scars and know that in him I am beautiful. Even with the stretch marks of growth, the burn marks from sin, the bruised knees from prayer, the knife wounds from being stabbed in the back. I don't need to be stage ready. I don't need to try to make everybody happy with my performance. Just please God. And some people you can't please no matter what you do. You know, Christian women, and Sister Gail mentioned it on yesterday, we can be some of the most critical people. We can really be some of the most critical people on the earth. We need to stop being critical of each other. We need to stop being critical of our men. We need, we're here to provoke one another to love and to good works. Let your testimony be that you live a good Christian life. Live a quiet life. 1 Peter 3, 4. Let others see that you respect your husband. Colossians 3, 18. Do good to all men. James 4, 17. You're a good worker. You're a trustworthy neighbor. You live a quiet and peaceable life. 1 Thessalonians 4.11, James 3.17. Let people see the inner beauty that shines from within. Now, once I've done this, I've stopped the faking, I've gotten naked, and I've realized that in him I am enough, I'm ready to make my transformation. Okay, here we go. Let me, let me make my transformation now. Okay. Let me hurry up. I know I'm running late on it. Here we go, y'all. I know y'all was wondering what all this stuff was down here. Okay, here we go. Now, when I put on my hair, <laughs> what I need to remember is I need to hurry up and be about my father's business. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Now. Head tie, my, my scar. I need to be covered by the blood of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. And covered in the strength of his salvation. Yeah. Can y'all see the Jesus? Did I put it on my yeah. <laughs> When I put on I gotta hold the microphone with it. When I put on my makeup, I need to make up my mind that I'm gonna live a good Christian life. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I also need to put on some love, some joy, some peace, some kindness, and some long suffering. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you also need to take some stuff off. When I select my clothes, hold on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm bringing this thing to a close now. I'm not going to get completely naked. All right, so when I, when I select my clothes, I got to take some clothes off first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take off some worry. Some fear, some pride, hatred, lying, yeah, yeah, yeah. some other things, some other things too you need to take yes, off. Mm -hmm. yes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on, oh, this last thing. I know y'all can't lay it up this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's all I need right here. When I grab my purse, I need to remember to pursue some peace while I'm out on my daily journey. And I also need to grab the spirit. 
the sword of the spirit, which is the word. Yeah. When I put on my perfume, and a lot of us need this. When I put on my perfume, I need to make sure I'm spraying on some words of grace. Yeah. Right. Seasoned with some salt. Yeah. When I put on my lotion, which I, I don't really use lotion, I bought my Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> when I grab my lotion, I need to be make sure that I'm long suffering yeah. and faithful, yeah. gentle, and have a lot of self control. Yeah. When I put on my ring, I need to remember to fold these hands in That's some prayer. Right. Yeah. When I put on my bracelet, I need to remember to let God's word dwell in me richly. When I put on my shoes, yeah, this is, this, oh, wait, wait, hold on, got one more. Earrings. When I put on my earrings, I need to remember to ring out the message of the gospel. And then when I put on these shoes, I need to be remembering to run to share the gospel with somebody that's lost. So I want y'all to remember these things. Be the kind of woman when the, your feet hit the floor, yeah. the self devil say, oh no. <laughs> Oh, she's up. All right, ladies, let me close this thing down. I hope today that I was able to encourage us to go from taking a selfie to being a selfless me. We're going to stop faking. Amen. We're going to get naked. And we're going to know that in him, I am enough. Amen. More of him and less of me. Thank you.